Hi, my name is Joey Accardo with Epiroc Surface and Exploration Drilling. In this segment, we're going to reassemble an accumulator that's already been disassembled. We're going to need a few things for this. We'll need all the Epiroc special tools for assembling and disassembling an accumulator. We'll need an accumulator diaphragm. In this case, we're going to be reusing one that was perfectly fine. We'll need the accumulator itself, a 19 millimeter wrench for the gas charge valve. We'll need a never seize component o-ring lubricant or silicone grease, some solvent for cleaning, towels for cleaning, proper gloves for handling those chemicals, and then we're also going to need a 32 millimeter socket and ratchet, and then a torque wrench capable of achieving 300 newton meters of torque. We want to always check that torque value though in the manuals to make sure that it's applicable to the specific accumulator that we're overhauling. In this case for the SC25, that is the correct torque for this accumulator. Let's go ahead and do this. The first thing we want to do is make sure that our accumulator is clean, free of lint and debris, and in good condition. In this case it is, and we've already checked it. We're going to apply a silicone-based grease. To the bottom edge and sides of the accumulator diaphragm. This will help it to remain seated and seal properly and not get pinched or cut during the assembly process. Once that's installed, we can take the center section. In this case, we're using a copper-based never seize. We can apply some never seize to the threads and this will do two things aid in, in disassembly on the next time and also allow us to achieve the proper torque specification as the torque spec that is listed is based on a greased value. We never want to turn the accumulator upside down until the nut is fully tightened as this can dislodge the accumulator diaphragm. Once things start to tighten up, which they will with the grease on the threads, we can install the special wrench tool to give us a bit of a better grip. Now that I'm done handling the chemicals, I'm going to switch gloves to a more suitable work glove. continue to hand tighten this as far as it will go. I like to hand tighten it so that if there's any issues or any spots in the threads that are damaged or corroded that we'll notice it more readily than we would if we were using the power of the wrenches. As we get close to the bottom, I like to make sure that nothing has bound or gotten stuck on the diaphragm. In this case, we're in good shape. All right, now we're ready to torque it to spec. We're going to install the locking ring so that it doesn't, the tool doesn't pop off while we're using it. Install the retaining nuts, finger tight. I've preset our torque wrench to 300 newton meters. You'll want to follow your torque wrench manufacturer specifications when doing that. We're going to slowly torque it until we reach the locking point. In this case, the accumulator is now fully torqued. The last thing to do is reinstall the Schrader valve. And it's important to not put any kind of sealing compound 
on the charge valve. I like to reinstall the cap at this time as well to protect the threads. And we can now remove the special tools and remove the accumulator from the stand. We never charge the accumulator until it's installed in the rock tool. Alright, now all that's left to do is clean up and mount this onto the rock drill. For more information, contact your local EpiRock Service Center or distributor partner.